Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. So of course, we're going to continue in our normal mode of broadcasting here and so we have our prayer list and then a song and then we will be into the message so right now, as we uh, get to our prayer list, we are still praying on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, Geraldine Keyes, Emma Jean Hayes, uh, Elizabeth Adams. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, uh, Teresa Wanzo, Joe Brokaw, Brother Josie Pitts Sr. and family, Sheldon Horton, Jim Young, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County, and Cornelius County. We're also praying on behalf of the Jacob Blake, or Jacob Blake and family, the Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley and the Flowers family, Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgo. Betty Williams of The Connection, Bethany Williams, Vanita Coates. We're also praying on behalf of Su Susan Gilmer and family. We're praying on behalf of Dorothy Lofton, Brenda Williams, George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe, Commissar Phillips and family, Stacy Johnson, Dudley Sankey, uh, Jesse Stevenson Jr., and Sylvester Stevenson Sr. We're praying on behalf of Marilyn Washington, Ursi Joyner, Curtis Porter, Chinhen Jim Pitch, Darnell Red, Ronald Gleaves, Pearlie Jones and family, Valerie Sankey, Dicey Stevenson. We're praying also on behalf of Missy Williams, Willis and Norma Taylor, Teddy Lyles, Wilma and Harry Kellum, Matthew Johnson. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Brother Kenwood DeVore and Myra DeVore, Otis Phillips Sr. and Loretta. We're also praying on behalf of Gary Gassaway, Ralph Edward Stewart, Candle Yarborough, Reggie Brown, Wilhelmina Willard, Norvell Edmondson. We're also praying on behalf of Weldon Rucker, Louise Harris, Augustine Red, and Damar Hamlin. And so we're also praying on behalf of the bereaved Anita Pointer family, also Barbara Walters family. So we're praying that these families will be comforted during the time of their bereavement and that God will bless them with their families with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And so now before we get into the message, we do have Majestic Sounds standing by and they're going to be singing for us tonight, He Will Make a Way. So without any further remarks, majestic sounds. Make a way.
We certainly would like to express our appreciation to Majestic Sounds for that wonderful song, He'll Make a Way. I'd like to invite your attention this evening to the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and the verses eight and nine. Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verses eight and nine. And the Bible reads thusly, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So it is from these verses this evening that I am selecting for a subject, obedience, obedience. And we see that Jesus himself, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, God has always required obedience of his children. And we find in the very beginning over there in Genesis, the third chapter, that Adam and Eve, they were the first to disobey God's word. That's in Genesis, the third chapter. And perhaps you might know it or heard of it. And if you haven't, then perhaps you'll go there and read it and maybe read it to your children so they'll understand exactly what happened in the very beginning and why we're in the situation we are in now. And so what we see here is that initially when God created Adam, he gave Adam some rules, gave him a law, and he told him you can have any of the fruit of any of the trees in this garden, but that one, don't touch it. He said the day that you touch it or eat it, you shall surely die. And so then of course God created the woman, and Adam passed the rule on to Eve, about that one tree. And, uh, well, you know what happened. Oh, Satan, he slithered up next to her, and no doubt he was, because he was cunning, he, he beguiled her. That means that he charmed her. And so he probably slid up next to her and said, Hey, Eve, how are you doing today? 
and she recognized that she was the only woman on the earth at the time, realized and said, oh, well, I'm doing fine. And so then uh, the devil, he went on in the conversation and said, oh, yeah, you know, I understand that uh, you can't eat of all the trees. And then Eve went on to tell him, oh, yeah, we can, we can eat, but God has told us that of this particular tree, uh-huh, that we can't eat. This is what she said. Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the, God, to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. If you do, you shall die. And old Satan, he was beguiling. And he said, oh, no, you shall not surely die. He says, for God does know that the day that you eat of it, that your eyes will be open. You'll be wise. You'll be uh, like God's, knowing good uh -huh, and evil. And so, of course, that sounded good to Eve. And she saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. So what did she do? She took of the fruit and she ate it. Now the Bible doesn't tell me it was an apple. People want to mess with the apples and I love apples, but it certainly, the Bible doesn't tell me there was an apple, it was a fruit. And then there are those who will say, don't be concerned about the fruit, be concerned about the pear that was on the ground. And the pear being Adam and Eve, okay. But anyway, make a long story short. So after she ate it, she gave it to her husband. And then he ate. And what happened? Their eyes were opened. Uh huh. And they then knew that they were naked. And they wouldn't hid themselves. Uh huh. And so God, mm -hmm, he was walking down on the earth. And he called unto Adam. He said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I was hid. I hid myself. He, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves uh -huh, from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Well, right then, God knew what was up. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Then he asked him, he said, has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? And then the beginning of the uh, rationalization began. And he said, the woman, now he's passing the book, the woman whom thou gavest me to be with, she gave me the tree and I did eat. And so then God looked at the woman, and Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And then, of course, the woman had somebody to escape it to, too. And she said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. In other words, the serpent was charming her, charmed her out of the garden. Now, that's what happened. They went from paradise to laborers. So anyway, that's what happens. When you fail to obey God, you're going to reap some consequences. And so... They were then driven out of the garden. Now then, there was another character. His name was Noah. This is over there in Genesis, the sixth chapter, verses 14 through 22. Well, in Noah's case, he found favor with God. And, and God blessed him. And God walked with Noah. And then God gave Noah some instructions over there in uh, Genesis, the 14th, or Genesis, the sixth chapter, beginning with verse about verse number 14. And the Lord said, uh, that he, he wanted Noah to do something. He gave him some instructions. He wanted him to build this ark. So he gave him the specifications and the wood, exactly everything that was supposed to be done in this particular uh, task. He was building an ark. And so we find over there that he did exactly, followed the, meta, the measure to the T what God had given him to do. And so again, now we're dealing with uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter. And then in verse number 23, the Bible says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so he did. So as a result of that, Noah was able to get in the 
ark with his wife, his three sons, and their wives, eight all together, and they were saved from the flood. All right? That was because he was obedient to do exactly what God instructed him to do. Now, then there was Samuel. Samuel had received the task to go down to Amalek and to destroy, utterly destroy the Amalekites. Well, listening to the people, Saul, he took the king into captivity and he kept all of their best uh, uh, livestock and their treasure. And he brought that back. Well, that was not the command. The command was to utterly destroy the Amalekites, men and women, boys and girls. Everybody was to be destroyed. Well, as a result of that, Saul, who was inspiring to become the king of Israel, he lost out on that. He was not able to fulfill that position because he failed to obey God. The Bible says, the Lord, and the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. So the point I'm making to you tonight is that obedience has always been required. Even Jesus himself, as we uh, read over there in the beginning, that he became uh, the author of eternal salvation to all of them that, that believe in him, or that obey him, all right? Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So I'm on a mission tonight to get you to obey uh -huh, the Lord. Jesus, he had to also, we find this in the New Testament. Now, we're, we're leaving the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we see that Jesus was obedient to his Father's will. The book is John, the fifth chapter, in verses number 30. The Bible says, and this is what Jesus says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So Jesus was being totally obedient to his Father's will. In fact, you can hear him over there in the garden, Luke the 22nd chapter, verses number 42. Um, and in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed to the Father, saying, Father, if it be thou will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will. So, of course, you know, he went on to the cross and he suffered a cruel and ignominious death on the tree. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 5, 8 and 9, I read that in the beginning, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author uh, of eternal salvation to all that obey him. So if you obey the Lord, he is your author of eternal salvation. Jesus taught uh -huh, obedience. Over there in Matthew, the seventh chapter, uh, you know the story there. Uh, in the seventh chapter, Jesus, at verse beginning with verse number 21, uh, he had these words to say to those. He said another parable, uh, another, and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, uh, suffer me first to go and buy, bury my uh, father. Now, what I want, I was in the wrong place. 721, he says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Jesus is saying, look, you got to obey the Lord. you got to obey my Father if you want to make heaven your home. And he says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. And he knows that folk out there hollering, Lord, 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 all over. And they're not even getting anywhere with him. And he said unto them, he said, many shall say to me in that last day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name done not many wonderful things? And then Jesus is going to cast him out. All right? So let's hear this clearly. Now, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And then he said, Many will say unto me, uh -huh, Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name uh, cast out devils, and done many wonderful works? Uh huh. And then will he profess, he said, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Uh huh. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So if you're not being obedient to God's will, you are working iniquity and you're going to be cast out. Then he goes on to say further, he said, therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine, uh huh, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house 
upon a rock. And then he said, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. All right, this person was being obedient, doing the Lord's will. Then he says, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And then he says, and the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So I hope you have your house in order. I hope you're doing the things that the Lord has required of you because if you obey him, then he is your author of eternal salvation. And that's what I said. Jesus taught us to be obedient. And, and, and Jesus saves those uh -huh, that obey him. Remember, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all of them that obey him. Hebrews 5 and the verse of number 9. And only those, uh -huh, only those who are obedient can enter into the kingdom. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verse 14, he said, Blessed are they that do his commandment, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, the city of heaven. Of course, now you have to be obedient in order to get there. God is going to take vengeance on those that are disobedient. The Bible says over there in 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18, For the time is come, the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And then he says, verse number 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So you need to understand that if you're not being a righteous individual, you're going to suffer some consequences. Uh, Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, verses 8 and 9, it tells us also for those that fail to obey him, he says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? The Bible goes on to say, Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. All right? So obedience, obedience demonstrates our confidence. You know, when you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you you need to take these two pills uh -huh, twice a day, you know, with a full glass of water, and that'll help you to do better. Well, when you do that, when you take those pills, like the doctor says, then you're being obedient to him, and you're showing your confidence to him, all right? And so we show our confidence in our, uh, on our doctor by obeying his instructions. So Abraham showed his confidence uh -huh, in God by obeying his command to go into a country knowing not whether he went. That's Hebrews, the 11th chapter in the verses number 8. So we need to keep in mind that the reason for obedience is to make us fit for heaven. And we will serve God in heaven. Revelations 22 in the verses number 3, and there shall no more curse, uh -huh, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And that's what's going to happen in heaven. They'll be served by the servants, those of us who have made it in. So obedience must be learned now while we're down here on earth, all right? Because earth here, this life that we're living, is the preparation for heaven. So, if I were to ask you right now, what would your answer be? How are you living? Are you living righteously or are you living ungodly? Just keep in mind, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. And he is going to take vengeance on those that obey not the gospel and know not the gospel. All right? So now he has made a way for us, and that way is Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way. And, and he sent Jesus for that purpose. Remember Jesus, God said, I sent not my son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So Jesus is our way to, to salvation. How do you get to Jesus? Well, you get to him by hearing his word. 
Bible says that you have to have faith or belief. And how do you get faith? 1017, the book of Romans. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then you must believe what you heard. Hebrews 11 and 6, it's impossible to please God if you don't believe. He says, but without faith or without belief, it is impossible. So you must believe that God is if you have any inkling or any remote hope of trying to make heaven your home. So you must believe, all right? Then you must be willing to repent of your sins. Jesus said, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. So you have to turn away from those things that are contrary to the will of God, walk the straight in the narrow way, live a good godly life, and then you're on your way. Then you must confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. With that, what's, that's a mouth confession. Romans 10, 9, and 10. You have to make that confession with your mouth. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father, which is in heaven. On the other side, if you fail, he says, but he that denieth me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And then last but not least, you must be willing to be buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. That is the rebirth. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. You have a new slate, a clean slate. And so all you have to do is maintain that good Christian living. And then in the end, you'll hear the master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up here now. I'm going to make you ruler over many. And then by doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.